Welcome to New Salem's virtual worship experience. Please keep watching after the sermon to hear important information and updates. Good morning, New Salem. My name is Andre Hill, and I am representing the Deacon's Ministry. Today I have the pleasure of leading the devotion. The scripture will be coming from Psalms 91, starting at the first verse. Psalms 91 and 1. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. He himself will deliver you from the hunter's net, from the destructive plague. He will cover you with his feathers. You will take refuge under his wings. His faithfulness will be a protective shield. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day, the plague that stalks in darkness, and the pestilence that ravages at noon. Though a thousand fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, the pestilence will not reach you. You will only see it with your eyes and witness the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord my refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place. No harm will come to you, no plague will come near your tent. For he will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the sun. Let us pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we are gathered here today. Some are here physically, some are here spiritually, and some are here virtually. Lord, you said in your word, where two or three are gathered, you would be there also. Father, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit. Let it consecrate this service. Let it touch those who are near and touch those who are far. Father, we ask now that you bless the man of God who will bring the word to your people. For these and all things we ask in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen.
Give me your idols, every God that you made. You know the things you love more than me. You'd die if I took them away. Give me your options. Let me be the first one you call. Now you must choose what I am to you. God of all or not God at all. I'm God of all or not God at all. Give me the mountain. You're not strong enough to climb. I'll restore the days that you threw away. I love to return ways to time. Give me the questions. There's not one too great or too small. Still you can be free till you let me be. God of all or not God at all. I'm God of all or not God at all. Tell me who's the king of glory And writes every one of our stories Who knows the end before life begins And took all our dead to the grave So give me your weapons Be still while your enemies fall You'll never see till you let me be God of all or not God at all Oh, tell me who's the King of glory And writes every one of our stories Who knows the end before life begins And took all our debts to the grave So give me your weapons Be still while your enemies fall never see till you let me be God of all or not God at all God of all or not God at all I'm God of all or not God at all Tell me who's the King of glory and writes every one of the stories Who knows the end begins and took all our dead to the grave. So give me forever. We'll meet when the last trumpet calls. I gave you my life, so now you decide. I'm God of all or not God at all. Good morning, New Salem. It's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be alive. We thank God for a day we've never seen before. We're grateful for his power and his presence, and most of all, his peace. We come now asking you to bow your heads in a word of prayer. God, we come this morning remembering that we've now been in this pandemic just about a year. God, when it started out, we had no idea it was going to take this long. But like the old folks said, you've never forsaken us. You've taken us day by day with blessing and strength and grace and mercy. We don't take that for granted. God, we come rejoicing in the fact that you do love us. You love us more than we know and more than we understand. We ask for your power today and your presence. And God, we ask you to be in this word as we try to make the complex simple today and remind us just how much you love us. It's your servant's prayer. Amen. This morning, I want to come out of a familiar text located in the gospel according to John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, 
you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you would dress yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. This morning, for those of you who are used to a subject or a title, I want to give you a very simple one. This morning, I just want to talk about, yes, Jesus loves me. One of the first songs that we are taught in childhood is a simple song, and many of us had our mothers or fathers teach us this song. It simply says, yes, Jesus loved me, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. It is interesting. We are taught this as children, and we repeat it over and over and over again in Sunday school, Baptist training union, Sunday morning. Even though we're taught it as children, I want to suggest to you this morning that it takes a lifetime to live this out as adults. During this pandemic, have you felt like you have lost God's love? Have you struggled with isolation and loneliness, depression, separation, layoff? Maybe even in your worship style, you've gone back to the old ways where we become lazy in our worship and our praise. No drum, no bass guitar, no saxophone, no keyboard, no praise and worship team to get us ready. And maybe the Hallmark Channel has replaced our devotional time. Maybe it's Lifetime movies. Maybe Ben's watching our favorite program has really become our pandemic sermon series. We all struggle with this, if we're honest. It's been a year, ladies and gentlemen, and none of us have been ready for this. And if we're honest, preachers will tell you we have struggled as well. The ups and downs, the ebbs and flows having to do home goings in funeral homes as opposed to churches, having to preach to empty pews, being reminded that the church is not shut down. In fact, we're open more than we've ever been, but we're not confined to a sanctuary. And maybe God called time out on all of us to make us realize what is really important. But if we're honest, there's been some days, there's been some hours, there's been some moments where we've wondered if God has forsaken us. And, and, and if we're really honest, do we still feel the power and the presence and the love of God? I, I think if you're honest, there's some days we haven't felt that. There's some days we didn't want to get out of bed. There's some days we didn't want to go to work. There's some days we were sick and tired of Zoom calls. But I want to share with you, we're not the first to struggle with our former life. We're not the first to go back to what we're comfortable with, what we were used to. We're not the first to get lazy in our worship. We pick it up as we read in the text, John 21, verse 15. It is a third post-resurrection appearance of Jesus the Christ to his disciples. It's an interesting appearance because it happens at the sea where Jesus does a lot of work with fishermen. Remember now the encounters with the disciples but he calls Peter out. The interesting thing is Peter has returned to his former life. He's gone back to what he used to do. 
Jesus had called him to be a fisher of men. But he goes back to fishing in water. Peter was supposed to be the rock. But he was anything but a rock. And so Peter is struggling with, where do I go now that I've lost perspective, now that I've lost Christ, now that I've lost this relationship, what do I do now? Peter did what many of us do. He went back to his former life. He went back to fishing. He went back to what he knew best. God had called him out, but he had gone back in. Peter went back to hanging on seashores and trying to provide for his family on his own. He went back to hanging out with the old crew. He had been with Christ, but he went back to the old crew. Back to where he was comfortable. And sometimes in our life, it scares us to run with Christ, so what do we do? We retreat. We go back to the comfort ground. We go back to try to fit in where God has delivered us from. We go back to trying to hang out and realize we just don't fit. So Jesus calls him out from the other disciples on the seaside and has a intimate, personal conversation with Peter. Every now and then, you may be with other disciples of Christ, but it's become to my understanding that God will call you out for your own intimate conversations with you, between you and him, and you and him. It's all right to have people praying for you, but every now and then, God calls you out. It's all right to have a care group, but every now and then, God calls you out. It's all right to be able to reach mom and dad on the prayer line, but every now and then, God says, I want to talk to you. So here we find Peter with the other disciples, but called out from their midst. And he and Jesus begin to have this conversation. And Jesus asked him a very seemingly simple question. I don't want you to miss this because I want to help you understand the process and how Jesus reconnects him to what he called him to do. He says, Simon Peter, Simon, son of John. Remember now, Jesus had changed his name from Simon to Peter. But because he had gone back to his old way of life, Jesus called him by his old name. We, we sing a song that he knows our name. He knows our former name, our present name, and our future name. And so he says, you're not what I called you to be. You've gone back to where you're comfortable. Simon, not follower of Christ, but son of John. And so it's a quiet confrontation to let him know and to remind him I am very much aware that you denied me three times you changed the relationship you went back from being a follower of mine to being a son of your father and so he calls him by his given name Simon son of John sometimes as children of God and Christians, we want God to love us without rebuking us or confronting us. And God has a way of confronting us quietly and letting us know, I know what you've done, I know what you're doing, but we're still in relationship. I didn't move, you moved. I called you to be here, but you're satisfied here. You'd rather go back to your father's ways and doing what your father taught you to do. You'd rather fish for fish than fish for men. Simon, son of John. And he says, do you love me more than these? And, and Peter's response is, Lord, 
You know that I love you. And I have to help you understand this in a real context because what Jesus is asking him here is, do you agape me? Do you ultimately love me? Am I first and foremost in your life? Am I the most important thing in your life? Because remember, just the other day, you said you didn't know me. So I'm giving you a chance to reconstruct the relationship and re do you agape me? Do you love me like I love you? And in the context of Peter's reply, Peter doesn't reply that he agapes him. He loves him as a friend, as a brother. He loves him in that secondary love. Like you and I may love each other. And, and, and Jesus has said, maybe you don't understand. So he asked him again, Peter, do you love me? Again, do you agape me? Peter comes back. I only love you in that secondary brotherly relationship love. And finally, the text says that Jesus goes there a third time. And it says that Peter is grieved because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? But there's a shift in the language. Jesus no longer asked him, do you agape me? But given your past, are you sure you love me in a brotherly way? And so he no longer says, I'm concerned about your ultimate love. I'm concerned about your everyday love. Do you love me like you love your brothers and sisters? And so Jesus shifts the conversation from up here to down there. And what I've learned about God is that God always wants more for me than I want for myself. And he will always call me to a higher calling. But if I resist, he'll meet me where I am. I'll accept you in a secondary space till I can get you to what I called you to be. How many times? Has God called us to a higher level of commitment, a higher level of leading, a higher level of learning? And, and we've replied, you couldn't be talking to me. Can't I just stay where I'm comfortable? I'm comfortable here. And he says, no, I'm asking you to, to love me totally, commit to me, be all in. I don't want to date, I want to get married. And many of us are comfortable living together with God, but we don't want to submit to him totally. And so in this, he rebukes him, and then he restores him. He says, I'm going to reaffirm you. And so in this dialogue, he shifts from his expectations to meeting Peter where he is, and he says, okay, I'm going to invite you back to where you left me from. That's what I love about God. He always comes back to where we broke off the relationship. And he meets him in that space, and he says, if you love me, then there's some responsibility with you loving me. You don't just get to love me and that's it. You don't just get to praise me and that's it. You don't get just to come to church and lift up holy hands. But if you love me, love has to be translated into action. So what does he say? I need you. If you're going to be restored, I need you to feed my lambs. Tend my sheep, feed my sheep. God never restores us without giving us another assignment. 
And so he rebukes us. He restores us. And then he releases us. He releases us not just to come and worship, not just to come and praise and sing and shout, but to feed people, to clothe people, to meet people where they are, to listen to people. Not to get caught up, we can't come into the building. The building has to be opened up so we go where the people are. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. But don't miss this. He poses the question three times. Do you love me more than this? Do you love me more than these? Do you love me? Why three times, you ask? Why was Peter hard of hearing? Did he not understand the question the first time? Oh, it's deeper than that. You gotta go back to the three deniers. Peter denied him not once, not twice, but three times. And what I love about God, no matter how many times I forsake him, I walk out on him, I quit on him, I refuse to follow him, he gives me a chance to make it right. So my denials do not disqualify him from coming and meeting me where I am and restoring me to my rightful place. Do you love me? Cancel out. Do you love me? Cancel out. Do you love me? Cancel out. You cannot and I cannot follow Christ in our own strength. And so what he says is, if you're gonna do what I'm asking you to do, you cannot do it on your own. You've got to lean and depend and know that my love means I'm with you and I'll never send you anywhere I'm not willing to go. So maybe why we're so tired Maybe why we're so down and depressed is because we've been traveling in our own strength. And we are wore out. We are exhausted because our strength is not enough. But when you reconnect with him, when he meets you in that place, when he restores you, when he releases you, there is a power that he deposits in you to give you strength beyond understanding. So you can walk families through saying goodbye to loved ones they lost in COVID. You can help clothe homeless people. You can feed people who've been laid off, not in your power, but in his power. I want you to understand as a part of the New Salem family, I love the worship experience. I love the church coming together, but God says love demands action. And so as long as there's needs, we must act to meet those needs. It's not going to be comfortable. Matter of fact, the way you know it's God is it's uncomfortable. But after each forgiveness, God gave Peter an assignment. And that's how you know we've been restored because we've been released not to serve ourselves, but to serve the least of these, to serve those who cannot do it themselves. Not always the down and out, but there's some folks who are up and out. Got good jobs, but still lonely. Making money, but it ain't enough to satisfy them. Ladies and gentlemen, what the church is, the, what the world is asking the church is, if we really love Jesus, where do we put it in action? So as you wrestle with this this week, I ask of you the same thing that Jesus asked of Peter. Do you love me? Do you love me? And the good news is, we were taught when we were young. The answer to 
to his question. The reason we can love him is because he never stopped loving us. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones, to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. My yes is not in my strength, but his strength. So no matter what he asks, our answer has to always be yes. May we pray. God, thank you for the reminder that no matter what we do, how far we stray, your goal is always to restore us in right relationship. There's no doubt that you love us. Even in our dark moments, in our dark decisions, in our dark ways, you keep loving us. The amazing thing, we've got a lot in common with Peter. When we don't come to you, you find us. And while you're having the conversation, you're feeding us at the same time. God, remind us again. Put feet on prayers. Love and action. There can be no faith without love. Love demands and helps our faith grow. Bless this house, bless these your people. We ask you in your son's name. Amen, amen, and amen. The doors of the church open. What we really do is invite you to answer that question for yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. Even though Peter was with his crew, Christ calls him out and they have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I'm saying to you, I believe today Christ is having the same conversation with you that he had with Peter. Do you love me? Not do you go to church? Not do you pay your tithes? Do you love me? Because if you love me, all of that's included. You cannot compartmentalize God. Do you love me? There are lambs that need to be taken care of. Young in faith and young children. Young Christians, people just finding out. We need to live that kind of example. Do you love me? Even at the church's worst, it is still worth loving. Why? It's the pride of Christ. Do you love me in spite of my faults, my flaws, and my failures? Jesus says to you, I know everything about you. I'm never going to stop loving you. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? So we invite you to become a part of the New Salem family and more importantly, the family of God. You can do this in multiple ways. You can send us a text message at 614-568-4858. You can send an email to uh, New Salem Ministries and New Salem Cares, I'm sorry, dot com. You can also visit our church at newsalem.org and connect. Those are the three ways that you can become a part of this fellowship. If not here, we'll be glad to refer you to any church around. We just want you to become a part of the family of God. We're excited for what God's going to do in your life and continue to do. And we want your answer to that question to be, yes, God, I do love you. Because we love him, we are blessed to be able to share what he has blessed us with through our giving, our giving of our time, our talent, and our resources. And so we want to encourage you to put your love in action. There are still multiple needs out here in this community as well in any community. And the church still has needs that we have to meet. So we ask you to visit church.newsalemcares, I'm, I'm sorry, .org, give, or use the Shelby Next app as well. You can also use our cash app, dollar sign, NSCares, you can text us at 614-333-0656 or you can simply mail or drop off your gift to the New Salem family. We'll be more than glad for you to participate with us in that endeavor. We're excited today as we get ready for uh, our revival next week. We're going to cue the top five announcements and going to ask you to pay attention to that and govern yourselves accordingly. Greetings New Salem family and all our special guests. These are your top five announcements for this week. Next Sunday, get ready for four days of praise, worship, and God's word 
as we kick off the 2021 Revival Week with guest preacher, Pastor Willie Dwayne Francois III. Come join us for this all new virtual experience from Sunday, March 21st through Wednesday, March 24th, beginning at 7 p.m. each weeknight. And during the day, enjoy the Columbus Virtual Citywide Revival, discerning the present for an expectant future. Go to our church website for more information. Number two, New Salem Church has added a new platform for Sunday virtual service called Church Online starting this Sunday. In addition to Facebook Live and YouTube Live, Church Online will allow more interaction with our prayer ministry and online hosts in real time. Go to NewSalemCares.com forward slash worship to register and join our service. Number three. Do you miss going to the movies with family and friends? Let's watch a movie together. Promised Land Kids, join us for March Movie Time, Saturday, March 27th at noon. Registration ends on March 24th. There will be a special surprise, so make sure you register today. For more information, go to the church website or contact Denarian Lewis at dlewis at newsalemcares.com or call 614 614- Nine three zero two two four six. Number four, unscripted, the biweekly young adult forum on contemporary issues, faith, and scripture will feature special guest speaker T.J. Bula, Ph.D., assistant professor of history, ethics, and Black Church and African Dysphoria Studies at Methodist Theological School in Ohio. This is a part two of a conversation on the documentary, The Black Church. This is our story. This is our song. Watch it live on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. Go to the e-newsletter or the church website to register. The documentary is accessible for free until Monday, March 15th via the PBS app. And number five, tune into Wellness Wednesday on Facebook Live and YouTube Live at 5 p.m. This week's special guest is Sister Lucretia Long, who will lead a discussion on stress management and the psychological changes that happen with stress. All of these announcements can be found on church.newsalemcares.org or in the link below. Please follow us on social media for updates and information throughout the week. These are your top announcements. Have a wonderful week. God, we come now. Realizing that whatever question you ask us, Our answer is yes. We love you on our bad days. We love you in our dark spaces. God, thank you for not giving up on us. This last year has challenged us in ways we never expected. But your love never fails. Your love has gotten us through. Even when we've gotten lazy in our worship, you kept on loving us, God. So God, we leave this worship experience committed to serve you more through serving others and serving the sheep and the lambs you bring in our path. Bless this house. Bless these your children. Bless your son's name. Amen, amen, amen. Have a great week.